Hello everyone, now let us discuss about medical terminology and disorders of musculoskeletal system. First, we will be discussing the root word or word root and its definition or meaning. Ortho means joint. Burso means bursa. Carpo means wrist. Chondro means cartilage. Clavicular means clavicle. Coxo means cox. Costo means rib. Cranium indicates skull, femoro indicates femur, fibulo indicates fibula, humero indicates humerus, ilio indicates ilium, ischio indicates ischium, and mandibulo indicates mandible. Maxilla indicates maxilla, Meto, metacarpo indicates metacarpus, metatarso indicates metatarsus. Muscular indicates muscle. Myo also indicates muscle. Milo indicates bone marrow. Milo indicates milo, uh, bone marrow. Whereas myo indicates muscle. Osteo means bone. Patello means regarding patella. Pelvo means pelvis or hip bone. Phalingo means regarding the phalanges. Pubo indicates pubis. Radio indicates radius. Sarco indicates sacrum. Scapulo indicates scapula. Spondylo indicates vertebrae. Spondylo indicates vertebrae. Sterno indicates sternum. Tero indicates tendon. Tibio indicates tibula. Ulno indicates ulna. And vertebro indicates vertebrae. Spondylo and vertebro both indicate vertebrae. Now let us see some of the disorders. Art, arthralgia means artho means joint. Algia means pain. Pain in a joint. Similarly, bursectomy. Ectomy means surgical removal. Bursectomy means surgical removal of bursa. Chondritis. Chondra, chondro means cartilage. Itis is inflammation. So chondritis is inflammation of cartilage. Next is subluxation. Subluxation is nothing but a partial or incomplete dislocation. Remember, subluxation indicates partial or incomplete dislocation. The next is synovitis. Itis means inflammation. So, synovitis means inflammation of synovial membrane in a joint. These are some of the examples of terms. Now, let us discuss about some disorders. First of all, we will be discussing rheumatism. Rheumatism is any painful disorder. Rheumatism is any painful disorder of the supporting structures of the body. Example, bones, ligaments, tendons and muscles that, are, that is not caused by infection or injury. Rheumatism is any painful disorder of the supporting structures of the body. For example, bones, ligaments, tendons or muscles that is not caused by infection or injury and arthritis inflammation of joint arthritis is a form of rheumatism in which joints are swollen stiff and painful and it affects afflicts about 45 million people in the united states and is the leading cause of physical disability among adults over 65 years of age now, coming to osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative joint disease in which joint cartilage is gradually lost. It results from a combination of aging, obesity, irritation of the joints, muscle weakness and wear and abrasion. It is commonly known as wear and tear arthritis and it is the most common type of arthritis. It is a progressive disorder of synovial joints. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative joint disease or a progressive disorder of synovial joints, particularly the weight-bearing joints. For example, knee joint. And articular, what is the pathophysiology? The articular cartilage, the articular cartilage of the joint, it deteriorates and new bone forms. New bone is formed in the sub chondral areas and at the margins of the joint. This cartilage slowly degenerates and as the bone ends become exposed, for example spurs, that they are the small bumps of the new osseous tissue are deposited on them in a misguided effort by the body. 
to protect against increased friction. And these spurs, they increase the space of the joint cavity and restrict the joint moment. Unlike rheumatoid arthritis, which we will describe in the further session, unlike rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis affects mainly the articular cart cartilage. Although synovial membrane often becomes inflamed late in the disease. Osteoarthritis, it mainly affects the articular cartilage. And the two major distinctions, the two major distinctions between the osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis are that osteoarthritis first afflicts the large joints, for example, knees, hips, and is due to wear and tear. Whereas rheumatoid arthritis first strikes smaller joints and is an active attack on the cartilage. Osteoarthritis is most common reason for hip and knee replacement surgeries. Now let us discuss about rheumatoid arthritis or RA. The rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease in which the immune system of the body attacks its own tissues. In this case, its own cartilage and joint linings. And rheumatoid arthritis is characterized by inflammation of the joint which causes swelling, pain and loss of function. Usually, this form of arthritis occurs bilaterally. If one wrist is affected, the other is also likely to be affected, although they are often not affected to a same degree. The affecting degree might vary, but usually it occurs bilaterally. The primary symptom of rheumatoid arthritis is inflammation of the synovial membrane. The characteristic future or the primary symptom of rheumatoid arthritis is the inflammation of synovial membrane. If untreated, the membrane thickens and synovial fluid accumulates. The resulting pressure causes pain and tenderness. The membrane then produces an abnormal granulation tissue called as panis that adheres to the surface of the articular cart cartilage and sometimes erodes the cartilage completely. And when the cartilage is destroyed, the fibrous tissue that is beneath the cartilage it joins the exposed bone ends. And this fibrous tissue it ossifies and fuses with the joint so that it becomes immovable. The ultimate crippling effect of this is the root cause for the ultimate crippling effect of rheumatoid arthritis. The growth of granulation tissue causes the distortion of the fingers that characterize that characterizes hands of rheumatoid arthritis sufferers. The next disorder is gouty arthritis. As we all know, gout is nothing but it results from the accumulation of uric acid crystals. So, first of all, let us discuss about uric acid. Uric acid is a waste product that is produced during the metabolism of nucleic acid. That is nothing but DNA and RNA subunits. Uric acid is produced during the metabolism of nucleic acid subunits. A person who suffers from gout either produces excessive amounts of uric acid or is unable to excrete as much as normal. The result is a buildup of uric acid in the blood. And this excessive acid then reacts with sodium to form a salt called as sodium urate. And the crystals of this salt accumulate in the soft tissues such as kidney and in the cartilage of ears and joints. And in gouty arthritis, sodium urate crystals are deposited in the soft tissues of the joints. And gout most often affects the joints of feet, especially at the base of the big toe. And the crystals irritate and erode the cartilage, causing inflammation, swelling and acute pain. Eventually, the crystals destroy all joint tissues. If the disorder is untreated, the ends of the articulating bones fuse and joint becomes immovable. And usually, the treatment consists of pain relief by ibuprofen, naproxen, colchine or cortisone, followed by administration of allopurinol 
to keep uric acid levels low so that the crystals do not form. The next disorder is Lyme's disease. A spiral shaped bacterium called as Borrelia burgdorferi. It causes Lyme's disease. The name of the town is Lyme. It belongs to Connecticut where it was first reported in 1975. And the bacteria are transmitted to humans mainly by the deer ticks. And these ticks are so small that their bites often go unnoticed. Within a few weeks of the tick bite, a rash may appear at the site. Although the rash often resembles bullseye's target, there are many variations and some people may never develop a rash. Other symptoms of Lyme disease include joint stiffness, fever and chills, headache, stiff neck, nausea and low back pain. And in advanced stages of the disease, arthritis is the main complication. It usually affects the larger joints such as knee, ankle, hip, elbow or wrist. Antibiotics are generally effective against the Lyme's disease, especially if they are given promptly. However, some symptoms may linger for years. Now let us discuss about sprain and strain. A sprain is the forcible wrenching or twisting of a joint that stretches or tears its ligament but does not dislocate the bone. Sprains does not dislocate the bone. It occurs when the ligaments are stressed beyond their normal capacity and severe sprains may also be painful that the joint cannot be moved. There is a considerable swelling which results from the chemicals released by the damaged cells and hemorrhage of the ruptured blood vessels. And the lateral ankle joint is most oftenly sprained. The lateral ankle joint is most often sprained. And the wrist is another area that is frequently sprained. Now coming to strain. A strain is a stretched or partially torn muscle or muscle and tendon. Sprain is nothing but it tears up the ligaments but does not dislocate the bone. Whereas strain is a stretched or partially torn muscle or muscle and tendon. It often occurs when a muscle contracts suddenly and powerfully, such as leg muscles of sprinters when they spring from the blocks. Initially, sprains should be treated with price. That is nothing but protection, rest, ice, compression and elevation. And usually during the therapy, the protection part is ignored and it is called as rise in some cases. That is rest inflammation, compression and elevation. So first of all, let us see what is price therapy. Price therapy may be used on muscle strains, joint inflammation, suspected fractures and bruises. The five components of price therapy are, the first one is protection. Protection means protecting the injury from further damage. For example, stop the activity or use padding and protection and use plinks or a string or crunches if necessary. That is protection. The next is rest. Rest the injured area to avoid further damage to the tissues. Stop the activity immediately. Avoid exercise or other activities that cause the pain or swelling to the injured area. Rest is needed for repair. Exercising before an injury has healed may increase the probability of re-injury. The next is ice. The injured area as, as the injured area, ice the injured area as soon as possible. You need to apply ice to the injured area as soon as possible. Applying ice slows the blood flow to the area. It reduces swelling and relieves the pain. Ice works immediately when applied for 20 minutes or for 40 minutes. Back on for 20 minutes and so on. Applied for 20 minutes off, sorry, or not or off, off for 40 minutes. That means you need to give a 40 minutes break and then again apply for 20 minutes and so on. In that case, it works effectively. And next C indicates for compression. 
compression by wrap or bandage helps to reduce swelling care must be taken to compress the injured area but not to block the blood flow the next finally e indicates elevation elevation of the injured area above the level of the heart when possible will reduce the potential swelling the next condition is tenosynovitis the tenosynovitis is an inflammation of tendons tendon sheets and synovial membranes surrounding certain joints the tendons most often affected the most commonly affected tendons are at the wrist shoulders elbow and finger joints whenever the tendons of elbow are affected it results in tennis elbow whereas whenever the tendons of finger joints are affected it results in trigger finger and the other joints are ankle and feet and the affected sheets sometimes become visibly swollen because of the fluid accumulation tenderness and pain are frequently associated with movement of the body part and the condition often follows trauma strain or excessive exercise that is tenosynovitis may result from either trauma strain or excessive exercise and tenosynovitis of the dorsum of the foot may be caused by tying shoe laces too tightly and gymnasts are prone to developing this condition as a result of chronic repetitive and maximum hyperextension of the wrist other repetitive movements involving activities such as typing hair cutting carpentry and assembly line work can also result in tenosynovitis the next condition is dislocation and in specific we will be discussing the dislocation of mandible or dislocated mandible first of all coming to dislocation dis means a part luxation means dislocation dislocation is the displacement of bone from a joint with tearing of ligaments tendons and articular capsule dislocation is the displacement of bone from the joint with tearing of ligaments tendons and articular capsule, capsules a dislocated mandible can occur in several ways anterior displacements are the most common and occur when the condylar processes of the mandible pass anterior to the articular tubercles and the common causes are extreme mouth opening as in yawning or taking a large bite dental procedures or general anesthesia and posterior displacement can be caused by direct blow to the chin superior displacements are typically caused by direct blow to a partially opened mouth and lateral dislocations are usually associated with mandibular fractures thank you for watching please subscribe for further videos on medical coding and cpc training